I'm going to start by introducing uh, my friend and colleague, Dr. Stuart Saul. Um, Stuart uh, is a longstanding member of the faculty at both the Robeson Institute um, and Wild New York Presbyterian's Wild Cornell Medical Center. Um, he is reputed not only as an outstanding clinician, um, but also as a wonderful teacher, uh, both in terms of engaging with the, the medical house staff and medical students, uh, as well as um, in his ability to teach and motivate them to seek information on their own. Today, Dr. Saul will be talking about work that he's been leading um, with the Llewellyn Center for uh, Education. Uh, I'm sorry, I butchered that name, Stuart. I'm sure you'll correct me on it. Um, but uh, it's really very exciting work and really is a, is an, a great step towards addressing uh, inequities in chronic kidney disease management. So Dr. Saul, the floor is yours. Thank you all of you for that wonderful introduction. <laughs> and I hope, I hope I'm worthy of that. Uh, do this now. Okay, so what I'd like to do uh, is first to review uh, some of the epidemiology, some of the problems that occur that, that uh, I think everybody here is familiar with, but relate to our overcoming renal replacement therapy related healthcare disparities in underserved communities. And this is data that I think everyone is familiar with, uh, comparing the adjusted end stage renal disease incidence by race in different, um, obviously, racial populations, comparing. Uh, the white population here, and really threefold, uh, a threefold incidence in the Black African American population. This is cases per million. This is U.S. renal data service uh, system, rather, uh, data as of 2020. Looking at ethnic disparities, there's an obvious Hispanic and non-Hispanic ethnic disparity as well. And I think everybody here is pretty is very familiar with this. What was interesting is to take it a step further and look at the distribution of treatment modalities among end-stage renal disease patients. Again, using US renal data system uh, data, uh, you, you, we're not surprised that the incidence of in-center dialysis is very high. The peritoneal dialysis incidence is actually fairly well distributed also. The white population, the black African American population, the Asian population is over here. Uh, what's interesting, though, is we take a look at preemptive transplantation, and here the Black African American population clearly has a smaller incidence of preemptive transplantation. We take that a step further, and we say the rate of kidney transplants in patients undergoing dialysis between 2000 and 2018, again, comparing the Black African American population and the white population, look, the living donor incidence, the living donor uh, transplantation uh, incidence is much lower in the Black African American population than it is in the white population. Hispanic populations, similar Hispanic populations, lower living donor population versus in the non Hispanic populations, more living donor transplantation. So let's take it a step further. Let's step back and think about because what we're interested in educating patients, we want to educate our patients to make the best choices for them. So what do we use when we think about offering our patients a therapy and we're trying to offer them the best modality for each of them, what do we point to sometimes? And when end-stage end -stage renal disease modalities are compared, what metrics do we use to compare them? Well, we often use things like life expectancy. Well, not surprising here, this is again US renal data system day, uh, reporting that transplantation um, as you know, out at five years, living donor, deceased donor, uh, dialysis, the transplantation data suggests better survival. Well, if you start looking at that more closely, though, is that really what the data says? And maybe not, because all this data is observational. In other words, the groups are really not strictly comparable. Uh, patients who are eligible, some patients may not be eligible for transplant, or you have younger populations, older populations being pushed into one program or another. And, and I prank, frankly do pre transplant evals. I see that all the time. Um, having said that, what we said is, what determines what renal replacement modality a patient with chronic kidney disease may be offered and select, okay? And there are a variety of factors here, clinical and socioeconomic considerations, what's available, people look at comorbid conditions, 
But one of the things that also pops up is the cultural relationship of the patient with medicine. That may affect what choices what they have. That may affect how we, importantly, have to refocus what we're doing. So what we did is, one of the things we asked was, does modality discussion, education, include encouraging quality of life considerations? Because this encourages patients to really, uh, I'll show you later on in a very graphic page that we're, a website we're developing, it, we want them to take charge of their healthcare. We want them to make the best decisions for themselves in this context. So who do we ask? Well, you know what? We ask peer mentors. We ask patients who are successfully navigating the chronic disease journey. And I could say that uh, although I'm standing here presenting, I'm standing on the shoulders of our peer mentors who are spectacular and who I'm going to introduce to you. And also Dr. Dan Levine, um, uh, who I'll sh show you also. Dawn Edwards is one of our peer mentors. Dawn is clearly not a shrinking violet. And she's probably going to laugh when I say that. But she's so great because she crystallized everything that we think about. And John, Dawn's concern is we weren't talking about survival. Sure, you present that data, but how am I going to feel the best? Will I still be able to enjoy life? The will to outlive outdoes the numbers. This is Dawn. It's just a wonderful, wonderful crystallization of what we're trying to educate people about. So this will to live for us became quality of life. Quality of life became wellness. And our peer mentors are now referred to as wellness ambassadors. And I'm going to introduce them to you. Rogerson has established a wellness program. Again, this is from Dawn, and our mission is you, Dr. Dan Levine, who's really developed the wellness site that I'm going to demonstrate for you also, which we're extremely proud of, and which our well, this is all based on patient input, wellness ambassadors, really uh, crystallizing what we want to do. Again, I want to thank the Llewellyn Family Foundation. Bruce Llewellyn was a patient of mine. And Bruce Llewellyn crystallized what we're trying to offer people is education. But what we're saying is you must act to acquire it with a vengeance and pursue it with a passion. And that's what we're trying to, to, uh, to provide for our patients with chronic kidney disease who are selecting renal replacement therapies. This is a slide of an event that we're holding. How are we getting out there and doing what we're doing? And what we're doing is we're, we're, we're this is, I want to reinforce the idea that everything I'm presenting was developed by our patients and then put together by Dr. Dan Levine. What our wellness rogues and what, what, our, what we're doing is we're educating by patients, for patients, and staff, particularly when we go into the dialysis units. And what we're having is what we call staff, patient and staff empowerment days. You see our wellness ambassadors smiling there at an event, and we're engaging people by having them come up to an area where we can talk to them, ask us about home dialysis, ask us about uh, uh, transplantation. And what we've developed is this website that I'm gonna go into as an educational tool for all patients, for staff, it's online. And again, this is Dawn. When she went on home dialysis, she felt she could spread her wings and fly. And I was struck by how wonderful that was. Dawn, take charge of your kidney health. That was just so wonderful. Moving down, we can help. Okay, let me move this down. And I'm gonna say, the Rogerson Institute, welcome to our website. As Dr. Levine crystallized, our mission is you. And these are our wellness ambassadors at this, at this time. And what I wanna do is I wanna play Candace Sanders. I wanna play Candace's audio so that you can hear that because the purpose of this site it's not just a, bunch, a list of lines, a list of references. We want you to engage with our wellness ambassadors. Hi, my name is Candace Sanders and I'm a wellness ambassador for the Rogerson Institute. My uh, kidney journey started about three years ago when I was diagnosed with end-stage renal disease. Um, of course, this came as a shock to me. I was only 24 years old and I had no history of disease in my family. So um, I was very devastated when I got this news. In uh, actuality, the reason I got end-stage renal disease was because my blood pressure was extremely too high and it went unattended to for too long. So if we fast forward into my... Whoops. What happens? Oh, great. Sorry. Hi, my name is Candace Sanders and I could, um, but by the second year, I felt very lost. Uh, I was just over it. 
over it, over it. Being in center and just being around so much sickness and being around people who don't necessarily know me personally, they're just doing a job, I just felt disconnected and I, I pleaded with my center to help me get set up for home dialysis, which I felt like would give me a little bit more freedom and it would fulfill me in managing my care. Um, unfortunately, they were not helpful. To be honest, I, I went a year waiting for them to give me an answer. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to do this for myself. I'm going to hit Google and call everybody I can call until somebody picks up and they place me in their center. And best believe, Robeson called me up and it's been beautiful ever since. So now I'm officially transitioned into home dialysis, which I can say, oh my God, thank you. Okay. I just want to provide ongoing uh, support and coaching to people who feel like dialysis is a death sentence because it's not. Um, what it is, is a change of focus. And it's really important that you reclaim your life and find methods that work for you. Home dialysis was the best thing for me because I'm busy. I am booked and busy. So being able to schedule dialysis into uh, my free time is much better than me having to run to a clinic at a designated time. I'm so grateful to the Rogerson Institute for all they've done for me and I'm excited for all we have planned. Here at Rogerson, we really want you to get your wings back. If you need me, if you want to talk to me, when you want to vent, um, you anything you reach out to me i am more than happy to help that is what i'm here for anyone from the robeson program will be a wonderful wonderful resource for you so please take advantage and take care of yourself i want to uh illustrate that for everybody because candace really expresses the journey very well but the other thing that she does is she also offers our our the basis of our program connect with our wellness ambassadors get your wings back, achieve wellness at home. And I always like this picture. This is a shot Kidney of one of our wellness at home is a state of mind. Our wellness ambassadors featured in this video live rich, full lives. That's what I wanted to show. Our ambassadors that's have all want. faced the same issues you are facing now. Okay. So that's what I wanted to demonstrate to everybody. Connect with us. That's the purpose here. Connect with us when you've got chronic kidney disease. You have somebody you can talk to who's been there. Let's go on to the next part of this and we'll look at dialysis because this is an educational study. What we want to do with this, we want to look at, we want to demonstrate dialysis. And we're looking at, for example, peritoneal dialysis, hemodialysis. And each of these areas is designed to be a, an engaging video, but also these were all questions that were raised by the wellness ambassadors. This is a site that they put together. What are the benefits of dialysis? What training and preparation do you need? What are frequently asked questions? Things we don't always think of. There's a voiceover here so that you don't have to just read these. You can actually, patients can actually listen to this, okay? Questions, great questions like, do I have to buy the equipment? Do I have to get rid of my pets? These are all things that we want to introduce to patients early on as they're trying to consider what would be the best modality for them. And this, the, each of these sections can be printed so that patients can show them to family members. In addition to peritoneal dialysis, we have a hemodialysis site as well. We again show equipment, but we also show home dialysis, self-care, and center dialysis. What are the benefits of each of these? Training and preparation, voiceovers. What does the equipment look like? So people can really educate themselves and the staff can educate themselves as well. I like this also. Do I have to rewire my home for hemodialysis? What do I do, do with needles? All these things that might be barriers, let's overcome these, let patients get educated and let's overcome them. Um, going on, the, uh, not, uh, no, this is the wrong thing. Going further on from hemo, nutrition. Nutrition is key. And this is a great visual that Dr. Levine put together and the wellness ambassadors asked. These are very straightforward questions that we think patients always are, are, are know about, but you know what? They may be less clear. Sodium intake, blood pressure, fluid intake. And how about a great visual of diabetes and the complications that occur with diabetes if you don't manage your diabetes well? This is not meant to be, we're not meant to be nutrition uh, dietitians. This is not a dietitian site, a bunch of listing, a bunch of things. But what we're doing is we're demonstrating, look at the wide diversity of foods, work with your dietitian to adjust your eating habits. 
so that you in fact can enjoy some of the things that you enjoy and adjust your diet based on uh, your chronic kidney disease, but also the things you like. Print out suggestions. We go from dietitian, the dietitian site, we go to transplant. And transplant, okay, great. So here's the transplant site. And these are the wellness ambassadors. They put these things together, the transplant top 10. You know, these are questions they would have wanted to know, okay? Difference between living and deceased donor transplants, you know? And outcomes, survival. You know, how long is my kidney gonna last for? And what happens when a kidney becomes available for me? What if I say no? You know, what are the ramifications? In fact, the non-ramifications. So we, we offer the transplant top 10, but we also, what the wellness ambassador guided us to were, were internet sites to reduce your, your, your uh, time to transplant. So that you can list, we obviously encourage people to list at our sites here at Columbia and Cornell, but also take a look at some of these other sites, transplantmultilisting.com, the scientific registry for transplant recipients. Let's look at those and see, um, maybe we'll learn more about transplant, uh, other sites that it, you might have a shorter wait because ultimately we want to encourage people to get transplanted. Is a kidney transplant right for me? And finally, what's a donor chain? We saw, we want to encourage donation. We want to encourage transplant donation. And Dr. Levine put together this beautiful, you know, schematic, this great diagram, an engaging diagram. It's, it's almost fun. How do we exchange uh, kidneys when donors and recipients, their prospective recipients are, are not matches, but we want to encourage people to donate. Register for donor chain, register at the Wild Campus, register at Columbia, register at the National Kidney Registry. This is all available on this site. It's one stop and provides you with a breadth of things that I don't think any other site provides you with. Also, what if you have a donor? Register to donate in Wild Campus, register to donate it at the Cornell Campus. Join the New York State Registry here. And of course, the programs, the Columbian Cornell transplant programs are right here. We wanted people to see that. How about ultimately resources? Well, I got, I'm gonna show you here, you're not surprised. These are our best resources. They're right here. But they also organized COVID-19 vaccine and then a series of essential resources, not a list, but logos. So people can be more interested in engaging with or going into some of these sites, essential resources, education and information. And finally, associations and organizations that people, patients with chronic kidney disease, family members, gee, they might be interested in looking into some of these, some of these, some of these things. Um, now, finally, of course, what we want you to do is we want you to reach out. Reach out to us. And you have the opportunity, you the patients in all these, in the dialysis units chronic kidney disease, here are the wellness ambassadors, Sign, reach out, contact us, email us, We're ha select an ambassador you would wanna to speak to or you don't wanna to speak to. It can be video, it can be over the phone, but we can interact and we can help you with, uh, we feel the ambassadors can really help along the way with their journey. Now, let's talk about the J. Bruce Llewellyn Wellness Center. This is something that we're setting up in Brooklyn in two clearly underserved areas. Obviously, the point of the wellness site that I presented to you was to, to, to demonstrate that also. But we're gonna have a primary site in the East New York, say, in the Rogus Institute, East New York, and also in Brownsville. Again, education, self-empowerment, that's the name of the game. And this is a curriculum that our wellness ambassadors have, have put together that we're developing, that will be presented formally in a, in a center in, uh, in East New York, but also we'll be able to hold the kinds of conferences, the Zoom conferences, et cetera, et cetera, to educate patients and their families about chronic kidney disease, life after transplant, incredibly important in the communities we're reaching out to, social services. What services do you need, okay, to really make your kidney journey successful? How can we help you find the support you need? And another aspect of this is unique. We're interested in educating the staff. And this was Candace, she said, we want the staff to become an ally for the patients. Staff often educate the patients. We want to make sure they're educated too, okay? But we want to know, we want them to know that when a patient is sitting in a dialysis chair and their eyes are closed, it doesn't mean they're sleeping. What's going on that they need to be aware of? And this is what the Llewellyn Center is going to be, be uh, developing. The other program we're going to be developed is our PEAK program. 
our program for education and counseling in advanced kidney disease. Stage four chronic kidney disease uh, based in, uh, in uh, the dialysis unit and the hospital uh, next to the dialysis unit in Brownsville for outpatients in physicians' offices and in, in hospital patients. We again, engagement and education. We have a nurse educator who's going to be developing those programs with us. Preemptive transplantation. This is something we want to introduce and encourage the community. Let's take a look at what we've done in Manhattan. We've had about 315 patients over the last five years in our renal replacement therapy program, preemptive transplants. Let's take a look at the Rogus and Peak program in Manhattan. Look, 13% of the patients have actually gone on to preemptive transplant versus the national average of 3%. That's four times as many. Education. How about patients, home dialysis? Look at the Rogus and Peak program. 26% of our patients are on home dialysis. In the USA, it's about 11%. In New York, it's 3%. We're tenfold that. This program can be extremely, extremely successful to educate people to make choices that let them uh, really put their life on, on, on at primary, their quality of life. What we want to do is this, change. We want to change the distribution of treatment modality for CKD patients. Why? By encouraging education and peer mentoring. And that's what we're providing. Our philosophy, knowledge is power. No, actually, knowledge is also wellness. Okay, thank you.